So I was finally persuaded to get an e-reader. Uh, the main reason for it wasn't actually because I wanted to read, you know, books on it, um, although I probably would have ended up doing that. The main reason was that I was just a bit tired of faffing around with printers and because other primary use that I use a printer for is to print out like meeting documents, agendas, minutes, that kind of thing. I don't do it that often, which is maybe part of the reason I always end up just making a mess of it. I know that printers aren't great on Linux. I've, well, I've never had a great user experience with printers on Linux. I haven't used Windows for a while, so I don't know how Windows compares, but um, it's always been a bit finicky. Some distributions are better than others, but at the end of the day, it all seems to be a proprietary mess where something over a certain period of time just isn't really that well supported and you kind of then start you know getting it to work on a wing and a prayer um so i thought well why not try something that is just a little bit more straightforward in that regards because printers are you know, they're complicated to 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 get work in at the best of times they all they're different they're mechanical so, so i thought you know what i can get away with an e-reader right you know so i can just transfer some documents to the e-reader uh, like you know agendas minutes any you know various bits of reading material it's pretty you know low uh, intensity when it comes to battery electricity usage uh, i can also use it to read books i've got some like ebooks lying around that i've just been given and all that kind of stuff over time um and some stuff that's just like out there in the um in the public domain basically some like essays and, and stuff like that uh so i thought you know yeah it'd be, it'd be nice to sort of read it in a in a way that sort of like comfortable on the eyes basically um so i thought all right and i was it was recommended to to get a um a kobo because obviously with amazon kindle you it, i believe that there is this sort of implication that you're locked into the amazon system but i'm not entirely sure of the full parameters of that feel free to of course enlighten me down in the uh, comments section below regarding that um i do know a few people with kindles and they seem to like them but in all honesty like uh, I just want a uh, like a screen, uh, you know, like a tablet that uh, that I can just load some 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 books on and just read off of it. That's you know, it's a very sort of simple state of affairs. So so it was recommended that I got a, a Kobo. So I got a good old second hand, of course, because I'm not going to uh, you know go out on a go and spend too much money on my first first e-reader. So I got the Kobo Mini e-reader uh, model N705, and oh boy, was this. A horrible mess to deal with this is not going to be a positive review of of kobo at all not this particular e-reader but also not the company behind it either like from beginning to end and i'm probably going to end up trying to return this this kobo after this video to be honest because yeah like it's it's really put me off them as a company it's kind of not enamored me to uh to ebooks at uh, e-readers at all um and that's kind of even without getting into the sort of the trepidous, uh, the, the sort of the, the 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 trepidations of of have applying like DRM to the written word and uh, bringing all you know sort of literature into this you know very capitalist corporate realm, which is a bit um ominous at the at the best of times like someone mentioned it on mastodon it's like isn't you know amazon just doesn't doesn't amazon just strike you as the type of company that is the the big corporate master villain in a dystopian you know film or something like that and it kind of is like it has that hand in every aspect of your life and it's then just you know reaching its claws around the um and the thing is so i so i went with kobo because they kind of have a bit of a softer reputation right they, they they're a bit more open you don't necessarily have to buy into their 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 particular bookstore and i thought you know i could just buy one of these second hand just load some stuff on it and then i and go simple as that simple as that i mean it uses a, a micro uh, oops i've just knocked my keyboard there uh, okay, uh, it's got a, a micro USB uh, charger at the back, so it's nice and standard. Um, and then, so when I loaded it on for the f loaded up for the first time, uh, it asked me, uh, "Do I want to uh, that it's, it, it needs to upgrade? Do I want to do it through the computer or do I want to do it through the wireless?" Right. Um, so basically, uh, when I I said, "Well, you know what, save." fussing around with the wireless i just plugged it in and then followed the instructions which told me to go to a website and then download the app that was only available for windows and ios right mm, that's a bit of a pain but okay so what i'm going to do I, I just decided to go wireless right so it could connect directly to the servers itself and then hopefully download the update um you know all, all within the ecosystem without having to touch the computer i don't want to you know load on um kobo's 
proprietary app onto my my operating system just to load a few ebooks on there the device was picked up perfectly fine and in fact i could even transfer the ebooks themselves onto this device uh just like you would do with any any usb device it was straightforward it was picked it up a treat like that uh calibre uh, even sort of recognized it as a kobo device great no problems on that front so i said all right well look I, i'm not but you know right off the bat i wasn't particularly happy that this device required me to connect it to the internet straight away in order for me to even get this device into a usable state to get past the first boot screen that was that was a bit annoying because i don't generally consider that to be a necessity to read a text file so i went ahead i put my wi-fi details in and it then connected to the network network connection success great um and then it just gave me a what what it referred to as a network error oh frustrating maybe the website was down maybe there's a problem but i'll tell you what i went on to support and i talked with some of the kobo staff there i actually ended up speaking to three people in all um first off when i um basically the long short of it is is that you do need like a kobo account to really to to access the, this device they said uh the if you don't want to connect using wi-fi you have to download their app and their store and because this model uh was made in 2012 making it eight years old basically sort of nine now that we're in 2021 um it's no longer supported and thus the the wireless uh, or the wi-fi updating is no longer supported so if you don't have a desktop computer as an increasing number of people don't or if you do not have a windows or mac uh computer as you know and a substantial number of people don't um you're screwed you, you just have a paperweight here and this is quite a light thing this probably ain't even that great at being a paperweight um and they did actually suggest that i got a refund and that's pretty much the the extent of my experience with the kobo the allegedly more open version of what you would expect from an amazon kindle they still said that in order and i don't know if this is true or not and um as I understand it, there is, you know, you can do some hacking with it. And I did actually, you know, have, an, you know, have a go at, at, at trying to do some of the workaround solutions for this. I couldn't get any of them working. It's probably my end, but in all honesty, I don't want to have to hack around with, with this in order to get it to work. Like, it's just not worth it. Uh, I'd rather have something that actually, you know, has, has, has gone out of its way to actually just be a device that does the job that it's supposed to do, which is uh, display a text file like that's not that's not difficult is it uh, i could use i could you know like I, I mean it's it's kind of a bit of a sad indictment that like just getting the cheapest tablet the cheapest android tablet i could second hand or whatever would would probably w is more open than that like i could get an ebook i could i could get an ebook you know i could read an ebook off of it uh, i can do that kind of thing yes the screen is 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 not going to be really great to use but um you know, I don't need to, I don't need to, for most Android tablets, I don't need to connect to the internet in order to, to get it up and running. I don't need a Google account and I can just use the Afteroid store to get an e-reader app. Like that's what I've done on my phone. Um, obviously my phone is connected to the internet, but it's not, it's not registered to my Google account. I just have the Afteroid app store uh, and I got an e-reader and I can do that, uh, which is kind of fine, but also it does use more energy and it, 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 is is not pleasant to read on at any length right you could read a magazine article or, or, or something but when it comes to actually reading a like a novel length book um it's fine and i've already got the device so what's the point what's the point of the kobo this is just this is just this is just useless to me right now um i'm sure it would have been fine if i'm sure it would have been you know great to view uh, to use but um yeah like i gotta say disappointment all the way down on this one like i didn't even get a chance to actually use it because for some reason kobo just aren't interested in supporting devices from 2012 i mean my car is older this than this and my car runs a treat you know if you look after this this right i wouldn't know if this was like six months old or if it was uh if it was from from you know if it was 10 years old like it's it's in really good condition why have kobo just decided that they're just not gonna not gonna support the the model anymore I, you know, I, I honestly, I just don't get it. Is it because that they've they, it, it, that they've shifted corporate policy that they want to actually have more of a lock-in system or more of a lock-in platform? Because I should be able to have an e-reader without having to sign up to a store's terms and conditions where I can just read my my own books that I own. I'd like a device where I can read the books, the e-books that I own. That sh that shouldn't be difficult. Like I'm, you know, willing to put money down for it. I'm not asking for a free ride. Um. But it's it's disappoint, dis disappointing because it, it strikes me as being 
as, as being one of these alleged solutions to a problem created by corporations, right? Um, and, and, you know, the, the benefits over actual physical books, yeah, I mean, there's the space issue, which is, you know, it, it, is, it is beneficial. I often end up, you know, with, with a lot of books and I end up just, you know, giving them to a charity shop or secondhand shop or something like that. Um, and that's fine. Like, it's, it's a perfectly workable solution. Um, you know, books, are, books, are, you know, I've, I've, I, my issue is not with paper books. Like, this is the thing. My issue is just with printing like documents that I don't need that I'll need for like a meeting, and then they go in the shredder. Like, that's that's to me what the beauty of an e-book e-reader can really do. It's not necessarily replacing um, a book. It's replacing you know documents that you need for for meetings and work and all that kind of stuff. That's great, right? You know, like I just don't want to print out so much junk. Not you know, and, and it's not necessarily even an environmental thing at this stage. I just don't want to be drowning in paper. Like it's there's enough of it, especially in my line of work. It's um it's just neater that way. Um and the reading of reading of books is is just, you know, pleasant, you know, it's just on top of that. But it's weird that to me it seems that audio books where um you can you can like get them as an MP3 and you can play them on almost any device with sound. Everything from your mobile phone to your MP3 player to your desktop computer to your car stereo seems like a much more open format than than text. And that strikes me as being deeply insidious, deeply insidious that 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 novels and books are now sort of you know. It, it was all well and good when it was opt in, but it just seems now that I'm, you know, like finding something that is gen generally just this, you know, like an e-reader, but, um, uh, but but not locked into a platform that's going to ditch support. Like this is why we don't like DRM right here, right? Is is because it's um, it, they're they're just going to, you know, what happens if they just stop drop the you know drop the support for it in 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 eight years time. You know, does does that mean you know? It means that everything's a lease, right? You know, people have a go at me because of like, you know, I I, I use Stadia, and um, uh, but at least I go into Stadia knowing that those games are effectively a lease. At least knowing that in eight years' time that there's a chance that I might not be able to play my games, and I would be in, you know, I, don't, I mean, it'd be interesting, it, wouldn't it? That uh, that in eight years' time I could still play my games on Stadia. A solid chance that happening compared to like this, where I just like literally cannot use something that I own. Uh, eight years after after the company made it like that's you know and it's text it's text it's not like i'm playing a game on another computer using really cool and advanced technology i don't know i, I shouldn't be comparing the two in all honesty it's just uh it's just kind of frustrating that something so simple has just been so monopolized by uh you know like lock-in services right like it's it's you know it's it's not doing the world of literature any favors whatsoever it's kind of kind of kind of horrible really so i certainly would recommend recommendations for more open genuinely open like like just an e-reader where i don't have to connect to the internet i can just load some epub books on it and just read them like normal do you know what i mean like how you would expect it to work um because it's this is junk this is just junk it's you know and the thing is like one of the things that i've 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 noticed about a lot of like these counterculture you know anti big tech companies is that they just basically take on the same tropes as big tech companies like Kobo to me now from my point of view for, for, just strikes me as being it's the same as Amazon but the selling point is is that it's not Amazon but that doesn't so, so they're in every way like they, they lock you into their system uh, they push you to, to you know to, to buy books from their their collection which I'm going to assume is not as big as as Amazon basically they're doing all the things that Amazon do they're just not as good as Amazon uh, it kind of sucks, you know, I call these pretender businesses, you see them on like social networks as well, like you'll see like a video site that says, yeah, well, we're, we're like YouTube, but we, we don't play by the same rules as YouTube, and then they end up just basically wanting to be YouTube, but just not being as good at the thing that YouTube does. Um, you know, unless you're going to genuine, genuinely strike for systemic change, you're just pretending to, you know, you're just a pretender really you're just you're just not as good as the people at the top of it it's like andrew yang says no one wants to use the second best gps system like why would i want to use something more rubbish when the same systemic problems apply to it that's why i'm a peer tube boy it's because it genuinely you know changes the system beneath it uh rather than just uh we're not youtube you know uh so yeah disappointment all the way down um 
it just looks like the all the major options for e-readers are lock in you know lock in services not interested in that i just i i you know i'm all right with my i just want something to display documents i thought i could get away with this maybe maybe it's the wrong use case on my front i like the e-ink the e-ink thing kind of looks nice and if it if the battery lasts as long as it allegedly does that's great that's great like it's it would have you know in my mind would have solved the problem really well but the thing is i can't get past the first boot screen because the bloody kobe company don't support this device anymore. It's as simple as that. Maybe I could have got their janky proprietary software to work, but why do I want to load a friggin' app on my desktop just to read a text file? I take, you know, I, I, why, you know, why do I need to connect to the internet, right? It's, uh, they, the, the, it's obvious they want me to be locked into their bookstore. That's why you need a Kobe account in order to really use this device. That's what the support people told me. Maybe there's ways around it. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, I know that there is like there are allegedly hacky solutions to it, but I'm not interested. I tried it a little bit. I tried, you know, I went some of the way and to see how successful it was. It wasn't working for me. Um, it, a lot of the instructions came with the disclaimer. This depends on what model of Kobe you have as to whether or not it works. So maybe, maybe whatever for whatever reason the model I have just doesn't work. Maybe I did something wrong. I don't know. Don't have the patience for it. This is we're talking text files here. Freaking text files. It's, so uh, yeah. I, d I really am not like happy with e-readers right now um so yeah um it would have been nice to have actually given you a bit more of a comprehensive review but at the end of the day uh don't buy a kobe unless you want them to pull support on it eight years down the line and lock you into a proprietary app that goes along with it i guess um when i was uh moaning about this on mastodon there were like a few people that say oh but kobe's all right for me oh but and maybe it's because maybe once you get past the first boot screen it's all fine there were some people saying well i don't like the internet you know side of it but otherwise it's a fine device yeah the thing is though at the end of the day you could say the same bloody stuff about kindle except kindle just probably has cheaper books and a bigger library um i don't know if you can just use epub books on on a kindle Maybe you can, maybe you can't. I don't know. In all honesty, for my particular use case, I might as well just use my phone or get a cheap tablet. Like, I'm not reading novels or anything like that. It's fine. I could probably get a, no, uh, a cheap tablet that does more stuff for the, for about the same price as I bought this. So, yeah. I just, you know, disappointed. Disappointed all around. Waste of time. Um, not touching anything with Kobe again. Their, um, their customer service was was were pretty hopeless if i'm completely honest uh, not to have a go at the individuals in question that they were probably just reading from some script or something but uh they base they basically just told me to get a refund which is at least is honest like but they were like yeah no like it's it's an old model we don't support it anymore get lost that's basically what they, they told me um they ran they ran through some very basic troubleshooting turn it off and on again etc but at the end of the day they were like no nah, buy buy a new model mate it's like fuck off uh so i don't know any ebook any e-reader recommendations i'd like to hear them down in the comment section below preferably ones that don't connect to the internet preferably ones that don't require some some you know account that i've got to log into and sign in and, and agree to some shitty terms and conditions because you know i'm done i'm done with that shit i'd you know i'd, I'd rather to be honest <laughs> Never thought I'd say that. I'd rather fuss around with the printer at this stage. You know what? No, I'd rather I'd rather pay the secretarial services down the road the five p a sheet of paper it costs to print out anything I want to print out. That's what I'm going to do. Just pay. I'll just pay someone to take it off my hands. Five p a sheet. Well, you can't say fairer than that, can you? And it's supporting a local business. <laughs> it's just this COVID shit, isn't it? Really. Okay. Anyway. Okay. I've saw too much in this video for it to be a sponsored one. So fuck that. Uh, right. Okay. Um. Thank you very much for watching. It's a pleasure as always. Um, uh, as an update to my previous video, um, sorry if the sound is a bit pitchy on this. I've been playing around with the settings. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, not sure about the blue Yeti at the moment, but we'll work it out. Thank you very much for watching. It's a pleasure as always. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Toodaloo.